this is the last year of your contract, but not just What about your, yours? You got more in one year? You think uh, the guy working nine to five knows what tomorrow or next year is going to bring? Why should we be any different? This is an accountable world we live in. You want to throw that 3-2 change up? You want to try to steal third base when the game on the line? Go for it. This is not for the timid or the weak of knees. It is a results-oriented business. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're one of the greatest managers of your time, and yet you've never won a World Series. Mm -hmm. So is that a source of frustration or inspiration? Trying to match your enthusiasm right now, I don't have it. This man wants to wear his shades. Buck Showalter, welcome to Baseball Stories. Jason, how are you? I'm good. Well, you, you know, it feels like only yesterday, Buck, that you and I were working together, but it, it turns out it's actually nine years. Do you feel like you're as much a part of Baltimore as the crab cake at this point? No, you don't ever assume that. You know, Baltimore is uh, uh, it's a unique place that I've grown to love. Just, uh, you know, it's not how fancy your clothes, how big your house is, what kind of car you drive, and you know, people come to Camden Yards to see the Orioles win. I like that. There's a real <laughs> sincerity about it. There's not a meanness, but there's an accountability. There's guys, you know, they don't want to hear about you uh, having a tough trip out to the West Coast on a jet plane and staying at a nice hotel. <laughs> you know, they're working nine to five. I tell the guys that, you know, there's people that are staying up to one or two o'clock in the morning on the East Coast watching you play the Seattle Mariners. It does matter, and it matters to, to our fans that we, uh, that we compete and that we're good, and I like that. You know, you, you've actually spent um, more years here, right, uh, than uh, any of your previous stops. Um, nine seasons, a lot of seasons. W what does that say about... Are you counting this year? Well, this is, okay, this would be eight plus... Is this, eight, is this eight a nine? Plus? Let's don't assume anything, uh, Jason. <laughs> you know, okay. I, you know I, I, I think I understand, I, I understand the... Uh, the shelf life of managers in, in today's society where it's a quick fix and what have you done for me lately and you know you look at college football you look at the NFL you look at MLB the NBA you know I, I got it and you, know, you, you take it personal but you don't you understand that uh, uh, it's unique you know that's why I have such an affinity for people like uh, Belichick and Popovich and, and Saban and guys that win when they're supposed to expected to win because I'm not saying it's easy to be the little engine that could or the surprise team or the Cinderella. You know, for one year, what'd you do the next year? What'd you do the next year? You know, does your process stand up to time? And the Orioles are champions of the AL East. You know, I, I guess I'm really required by law to mention um, this is the last year of your contract, but not mm -hmm. just. What about your, yours? You got more in one year? I do have more than one. Well, here's my, here's my point is, you know, I, I was sitting there in, in our first meeting. I yeah. said, Jonesy, you know where you're going to be next year? Huh? You know, you know, our, our hitting coach, pitching coach, you know, you think uh, the guy working nine to five knows what tomorrow or next year is going to bring? Why should we be any different? This is an accountable world we live in. Right. And if you're, if you're functioning because of your contract or a commitment to you, your commitment should always be steadfast. And, you know, it's an honor. To, to have those commitments, whether it's two days or two years. I mean, take it and run with the opportunity, but don't be shy, you know, let it rip. I tell our guys all the time, you want to throw that three, two change up? You want to try to steal third base with two outs? You want to try uh, a bunt for a hit with a man on third and two outs and the game on the line? Go for it. The only problem I'm gonna have with you is when you don't go for it, you know? So this is not for the timid or, or the weak of knees. Yeah, now see, this that could have been an elephant in your room, but you, you had no worries about addressing that. Right? I, I don't think worries. You know, it's it's you know someone's going to ask that because you know the media and, and our writers and everything, they're a conveyor of what fans want to know. You know, they can't go back and say, "Gosh, I can't believe he didn't ask him that question." You know, and sometimes we'll come in there and, and we know there's a, a, a an uncomfortable question in their mind coming, and I want to go, "Okay, who's going to ask it first? Go ahead, let's get it out there on the table." There's two sides of everything, and you understand that uh, people are trying to bring what they bring. You know, I had a writer years ago in New York come up to me and said, listen, before it happens, I just want you to know that I'm going to be writing everything from Mr. Steinbrenner's slant. 
but I was I told them that my, my newspaper told me I could do that or I wouldn't have a job and I've got three children I'm making seventy five thousand dollars a year so I'm gonna be doing that well, I want you to know up front in case well so. that was when I quit reading articles and I used to put <laughs> I used to put this big packet of articles every day yeah. and I said you know why am I wasting my time with that because I want to treat people like I'd like to be treated you know one of my favorite things about being around you and and you know, now certainly watching you manage, being around your teams is, I always feel like you've thought of everything, that anything that could possibly happen has run through your uh, mind. I, I get surprised. You know what? No. I, I think of how boring that would be, when, Jason. Wait, when's the last well, time you got Well, first of all, surprised? something happens every day here on the field mostly that I go, wow, I've never seen that before. I've never seen, uh, uh, and sometimes, you, you know, my little sister, uh, Melanie, says, uh, you know, Preparation, organization, all that stuff's great. But every once in a while, be okay with spontaneity. You know, <laughs> and it's because, you know, I watch a lot in the dugout. I'm big off the ball, and you see things. That, that, and sincerity really shows itself in the spontaneity of a moment. You know, Paul O'Neill years ago, in the end of the dugout, you know, he came over with a certain hothead reputation. And, you know, whatever they may have thought. And I just, I always do it when I get new players, you know, I, I really don't want to hear a whole lot. You know, I got the stats and everything. Let's make up our own mind, fresh start. But Paul, when a ball would be hit down the right field line in the old Yankee Stadium, you had to get up to see if it was fair or foul. So about a, two or three days after he was there, a guy hooked the ball down the right field line, and Paul jumped up real quick and looked down the right field line. Then all of a sudden he caught himself and he sat back down. The next day I said, Paul, I got you. You care. You care about your teammate. He goes, well, don't tell anybody. <laughs> right. So but I'm, you can see those things. It's, right. it's how you paint a picture. Right. And but, or, you know, everybody is. You know, I, I, I watch them. You know, some people want to talk about it all the time. But, it, you know, your players are the ones that, that carry the mantle. Didn't he look in the dugout and say, you want me to do what? Kelly did. Kelly looked at me and I, I went like this and he went four and then he looked at first, he looked at second, he looked at third, <laughs> he looked back over me and went four? Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for him and welcome a skipper of your Baltimore Orioles, number 26, Buck Showalter. I wanted to ask you about some of my favorite things that I've seen you uh -oh. do and and uh, example you can't you, you can't talk about things behind the scenes in the bowels of ESPN on those 1030 <laughs> West Coast games. <laughs> I could tell some stories <laughs> about that. Uh, you want me to? I mean, like our, our friend Tim Kirchner, you talk about this all the time. You're sitting there in that, in that room. You got a thousand TVs in front of you. 15 uh, games are going on at once. It's a utopia, huh? And, and Buck Showwater here is going, see that? See that? See that? We don't see any of it. Yes, you did. Come on. You, no, but you had an ability. You still have an ability to watch a thousand things at once and not miss any of them. Well, I wouldn't say I miss stuff. That's why I got good coaches around me. But, uh, you know, I want to verify what my gut's telling me. You know, I, I don't, you know, the analytics and the statistics are great. I use them. We were using them back in 19, you know, 85 in the Florida State League, my wife was keeping a chart of all our pitchers. Each, Rodney Imes had a red line, Troy Evers had a blue line, and line drives <laughs> up. And they were doing it before. It's, but now we have so many reps now. We have so many at bat, so many pitches thrown. But I want that, that to verify what my gut tells me. And that's what we're here for. They, they bring things that I can't bring. I don't have time. I, I can't do it. And we bring things that they can't bring. And the best organization is one that mesh that and makes sure that everybody feels comfortable bringing what they bring and don't go, wait a minute, that's something I don't understand. We have uh, analytics for dummies every <laughs> spring just about yeah. where I take our most veteran guy, I have him sit down with them, and then he makes a presentation to all our veteran on the field people. And what we found with FIP and war and all these different things is they kind of go, oh, really? That's what it is. You know, take take the cloak off of it and let's embrace it instead of going, wait a minute, that's not the way I was brought up. Right. You know, you learn from it, but don't. And also I'd say, okay, tell me what this tells us and then tell me what it doesn't tell us. Tell me what war doesn't tell us. You know, have they perfected the defensive schemes to really trust them? And, uh, and players can't feel like you're robotically evaluating them with a piece of paper. You know, it's, it's knowing that uh, Asher Wojciechowski lived in uh, Dominican Republic for four years and his mom and dad were a missionary that he moved around you know they need to know that they're more than just a, uh, a robotic
piece of meat. You know, they're a human being, and sometimes that's the separator in this game. It, it is. Well, you can tell I've had some coffee today, right? <laughs> <laughs> coffee comes in handy uh, this time of year. Um, let me ask you about something I, that I don't think has ever been measured. But if I were going to measure it, I would guess that we talk a lot about mound visits, right? Mm -hmm. Your time dug out to mound is the fastest of any manager who ever lived. Certainly that I've ever. What, what's your, who, who instilled that in you? Or uh, what instilled that you in know, you? You know, I think years ago, I will tell you this. I don't know if there's ever been a manager in my lifetime that impacted more other managers' styles than Tony La Russa. You know, I never saw Tony dry hump a pitcher. You know, I talk a lot to relief pitchers about what, what I haven't done what you've done. Tell me what bothers you. Tell me what works. Tell me what, what each one. And, uh, you know, I'll see you guys in the second inning have a left and right handed pitcher up. You don't know before the game starts who's going to be in long relief in that situation. You know, we always, Roger and I, before we leave, uh, we go, okay, this guy gets hit with a line drive and the elbow first pitch, what are we doing? You, know, you got to have that answer. And I just think that, you know, when you know that your relief pitcher is ready, your starting pitcher's coming out of the game, or, or relief pitcher's coming out of the game, why is there some big fake drama uh, with your walk out there? You know, are you wanting all eyes on you or attention? I mean, and the game, you know, I want the game to move. I want fans to enjoy it. And they didn't come there to watch some guy make this high drama, ceremonial, slow walk out to the mound. And the era that I started out with, that was the way it was done. Yep. And it's also a presentation of, uh, of decisiveness. It is. You know, I've seen, you know, and it doesn't make anybody else right or wrong. It's just the way that I was brought up in the game that uh, you know, they're not there to see you. They're there to see the players. And if you got a move to make that's going to hopefully help your team, we'll make it. Uh, you know, I, I and get it. on and off. Yeah, I love it, man. When they're when when they're talking about pace of game, pace of action, I hope oh. they show that clip to and everybody I, in the game. I was on the uh, uh, the competition committee. I had three or four managers on there. I guess just because of my age, and I'm not sure if I'll be asked back. But <laughs> it, it was fun. You know, it was good, you know, a lot of the ideas and what you find out more than anything, oh, now I know why that hasn't been done. Now I know why, you know, the things and how many things they've actually been doing under the radar to try to improve our game. Our commissioner has a great love for trying to continue to make this the game it is to our fans. That's why we're all here, you know. Everything you do should be patterned towards the fans. Let me ask you about the most famous what if I think you've probably ever contemplated. Nobody in the decade of the 90s has more home runs score the that man. What if Barry Bonds comes to the plate with the bases loaded? Am I going to walk him? Here, here, Jason, <laughs> what? here's the bottom line. What gives your team the best chance to win? Right. Not the scrutiny of the questions that are going to be asked, what if? That's your job description. And, and they're walking him with the bases loaded and intentional walk to Barry Bonds. Unbelievable. This is flat out saying I will not let you beat me. This is history. Barry Bonds walks to drive in a run, making it 8-7. Barry Bonds was about seven for something with three or four home runs off Olsen, and he was my last pitcher, and it was raining, and we're in candlestick, and I was watching. <laughs> I, I thought about it for the inning, believe it or not, because I could see how the inning might unfold, and I knew that they had brought him in in a double switch. He didn't start that game, and I knew Jeff Kent wasn't hitting behind him. Brent Main's a good hitter, good major league career. He was on deck. But I had a shot at facing Barry Bonds or him and roll the dice. Line to right field, but right there is the right field will make the catch, and Arizona has won after Buck Showalter walked Barry Bonds with the bases loaded. Now, as the ball went out to Brent Breedy and got lost in the lights, um, it was interesting. You know, they had these two gentlemen that were uh, ball men, ball boys, yeah. elder gentlemen in San Francisco, I well. and I still get a Christmas card from one of them. And, they came up to me the next day and they were looking around, make sure nobody could see him. And they said, oh, that's, that was great, God. I said, <laughs> I said, I wish you'd have told me it was gonna work before it happened. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's, it's happened since then. And you know, I still look back at Kelly Stinnett and some of the looks, Ole and, Ole and I still kid about it. You know, he'll come in for an old timers game in Baltimore and I always ask him, what are you thinking? He, he go, he said, you know, at first I went, and I went, yeah, I kind of like this. <laughs> Wait, didn't he look in the dugout and say, you want me to do what? Uh, Something that yes affects? and no. Yes uh, and no. Uh, Kelly did. Kelly looked at me and I, I went like this and he went four and then he looked at first, he looked at second, he looked at third. <laughs> he looked back over me and went four? Yeah. Ole kind of went, huh, all right. I knew he was a little nuts, but let's go. 
<laughs> it kind of took all the onus off Greg, you know, and put it all on me, and that's really what we're supposed to do, right? Yeah. I, that's like a, a guy that goes out the mound and asks a pitcher, you okay, do you want to stay in? You know, that's not their job. Either leave them in or take them out. Don't put them on the spot like that. That's not, you know, you know uh, what if they told you I'm done? And then yeah. you're going to be in there after the game going, he's not tough or something. Come on. That's not their job. You're supposed to make those decisions and live with the repercussions. It is a results-oriented business. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're one of the greatest managers of your time, and yet you've never won a World Series. Mm -hmm. So is that a source of frustration or inspiration? Yeah, I don't think that's going to be long for this game. <laughs> he keeps arguing this one. There he goes. Up has been tossed. I wonder about this sometimes. Um, I mean, you have a, a track record and you have a certain uh, presence uh, as a manager and certainly in a history. And I look at managing today and it feels like managing has no, changed a lot, has. right? It's, it you don't has find... and it hasn't. Okay, it well, tell me how hasn't. you think it has. I, I'll tell you what I see. Okay. Uh, I mean, managers, when you started, had a certain weight. Uh, I, I don't like to use the word power, mm -hmm. but managers had a, a, a level of power in their organization that I don't know that they have today. Do you have concerns about the way managing is trending? Not really, not really. I, I think uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same. I think there's some really bright people coming into the game that I love to pick their brain about and make them defend their, and they're good at it. I mean, we, we've got some bright young people here. We've got some that have come and moved on to bigger and better things. And I like helping them, you know, okay, yeah, that tells you, but what about this? Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, right. You know, I worry a little bit about the games getting too scripted because what happens with a lot of these people is when the game doesn't follow a script, they go, wait a minute, that left-hander didn't get that left-hander out. Wait a minute, that guy that's supposed to lift that low sinker didn't lift it. Yeah. Wait a minute, what do I do? Oh, wait a minute, I gotta get somebody else up. Wait a minute, that guy didn't pitch the three innings that he was supposed to pitch. Now what do we do? So I think, and I tell young managers, I said, you need to be ready. What, do you, what if, what if the game doesn't follow the script that you think it will follow? And it's, cause it's human beings. Wait a minute, that shouldn't have happened on paper. Something right. happens every night, Jason, that we go, wow, why do we turn it on? Why do we watch it? It was so scripted. You know, then it, nobody would watch it. You know, why do you, why does somebody, you know, c come back from 20 points down in the NCAA basketball? Because, wow, how'd that happen? Well, let me watch in case it happens. Right. But, you know, you've got to, you know, I'll bring in a pitcher and my first thing is what if? And what are you going to do if he doesn't do the job that you think that he should be able to do from his track record? You always got to be thinking and, you know, once it's happening out there, you've got to be moving on to the other part of it. Well, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about, though. Uh, front offices now are so involved in who's who's playing, what's the lineup going to look like. Uh, and that's and, fine. And that is, I mean, there is a certain script It's now. always been that to some extent, not, Jason. Not nearly to this extent. You know, I mean, Gene yeah, Michael, yeah. John Hart, you know, we, we talked about, after every game, they'd come down and we'd sit around and talk the game. Hey, why did that happen? I noticed that you didn't. Well, here's the reason. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. You know, you, he had that heel bruise and, and we can't talk about it because we're maybe trying to trade him or whatever. You know, there's always, I try to give respect to things that I don't know about. You know, we, you know, at ESPN, wait a minute, he should have bunted. it. Wait a minute, do you know that whether that guy, what was his bench like, that maybe somebody couldn't play? There's too many variables to that. And one thing I do get a little fearful of, you know, a couple of times I've contemplated going upstairs and, um, one of the things that, that really challenges me is we don't develop managers like we used to in the minor leagues. You know, I used, to leave, I used to leave to go to the Florida State League, New York Penn League, Eastern League, and here's 15 players. Now the other 10, you know, the Yankees, they said, hey, we want you to win your league and we want you to develop players. No special order, but both of them need to happen. And through that, you know, you learn how to identify winning players. You got to pick those other 10 guys that you took with you. And, you know, there was a lot of talk about the batting order and who your starting pitchers were. You, you got it, but there were certain things that you could do that would help you win the game. And I worry that sometimes we're losing that robotically. We're, we're giving guys in the minor leagues their batting order, their, their starting pitchers, how many pitches they throw, and they don't really know how to manage off script. You know, and that's, that's a challenge. And unfortunately, they're having to learn at the big league level. There's no doubt about it. Oh, it's 
say, can you see by the dawn's early light? I know you love the process. I also know that you love the journey, though, April to September. Um, yeah, it's a journey. That's a good way to put it. it it's, you know, it's not a what have you done for me lately. It's you got to trust the process. And sometimes the process gets blown up when your pitching not very good. <laughs> yeah, right. And as much as we love the journey, as much as you love the journey, it, it is a results-oriented business. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're one of the greatest managers of your time and yet you've never won a World Series. Mm -hmm. So is that a source of frustration or inspiration? Yes. <laughs> I understand the job description. I want to get yeah. to that finish line, but is it going to define my whole life? You know, is it going to, you know, how many people's lives have you impacted positively? You know, how, how you know, uh, I had a guy yesterday show up during batting practice that I had in, um, in uh, Fort Lauderdale. I had him in New York Penn League. I had him in Albany. He had three or four years in the big leagues when everybody said he couldn't. and. That's the thing that I, I, I walk away and go, yep, it's been a great ride, you know, being able to impact people and get things about people that some other people may not get. And, uh, you know, if that leads to the path of the last team standing, and God bless all of us, but I am not going to have my life and the way I treat people and um, defined by the way a season ends. I grind the heck out of it. I don't, nobody wants to win more than me, Jason, but I surround myself with people that uh, have that same ilk. Right, and right. Uh, but it can't consume you. You know, your wife needs you at home. Your family's sick. You know, this takes back seat. And uh, but while we're here, we're going to grind the hell out of it, and we're going to uh, try to do something that the people of Baltimore are very proud of. Well, if it means anything to you, you've impacted my life. Oh, uh, come on, Jason. I've, 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 I've learned as much from being around you no. as anybody I've been around in baseball. So. Wait, isn't it funny though how many people? So, so many people are are afraid to share that. And then I find out, wait a minute, he's right and I'm wrong. You know, you got to be able to say that. And I, I, you know, every year we meet at 8 o'clock on home games in there, and I love throwing things around the room and go, okay, our organizational manual has binders on it. Because wait a minute, you can't, you were in Detroit last year, how'd they do a relay with a, a ball man on first down the right field line? Hey, we did this with a shortstop and really, I like that. That's better. Does everybody like that? Okay, let's change that piece and let's get better. Hey, I heard something from an analytical a uh, guy or girl upstairs that really made a lot of sense. Let's think about this, you know, why? Well, that's the way we've always done it. Well, that's not a good answer. <laughs> Let's get better, you know? Listen, I, I know you've got a game to manage, so I could talk to you all day. But that's probably not a good idea. I just want to thank you for taking no. this time and joining us on Baseball Stories. All right, Jason, this is good exercise. Be nice. God bless you. <laughs> you too.